Hey guys, what's up? It's John Grande. Happy Thursday, October. It's October 15th, I believe. Midway, we're halfway through October right now. So I wanted to make another video. I'm, granted, I've been all messed out these past few nights. I haven't been watching too much horror, but last night I figured since it's a game, game or day off uh, before Game 5 here tonight in Los Angeles, I guess it's not here tonight, but it's in L.A., I figured I would watch a binge watch a bunch of movies yesterday, and that's exactly what I did. Actually, I watched uh, The Changeling, which is a perfect movie to watch on Halloween. Really, really good stuff with George C. Scott, like a ghost movie. I might do a review for that one as well. But the movie I watched before it is is an infamous sequel. It is a sequel that sucks sucks to so many different levels and I just wanted to talk about it because it's it's one I actually always go back and watch it has that little nostalgic feeling for me and it is oh yes Halloween 5 the revenge of Michael Myers yeah that so this I, I have a two-pack DVD I didn't get the box set I didn't get in on that $20 TCM fucking pricing error like I wish I had but got this baby here for five bucks at Walmart a few years back and um I, I don't know what it is about Halloween 5, man. I, I always go back and rewatch it. I, I, I have no idea. It's not a good movie in any means. It has some good stuff in it. That is, uh, it's never really talked about the good stuff in it. It's always, let's talk about the bad, let's talk about the bad. But I'll try to talk about both the good and bad uh, reviewing this here movie that came out in 1989 that was directed by Dominique O'Thinnan Gerard. And that is absolutely the biggest problem here with Halloween 5. The director... Did not know what he was fucking doing, because if you have also seen, there's a movie called Omen 4 with Damien's daughter in it, and it is so shitty and so horrible that you can absolutely tell it comes from this same director here who made Halloween 5. There are a lot of problems. I guess we'll start with the problems, and then we'll end with the good. Hopefully, we'll just go in that order, but... It starts off like Halloween 4 is ending and Michael gets blown to shit. He, gets, he falls down in this huge well. They drop a stick of dynamite down there just to make sure just to make sure he's just completely gone and done with forever. And, of course, you know, Michael kind of crawls out of this fucking ditch that he's in and, you know, gets to this river and just flows along with the river, escapes the dynamite at the very last second, James Bond style. And it's just so, like, it's right from that gecko, like the... The get go, you're just like, oh my god, we're, we're for a fucking, you just, you just know it. So he washes up on shore and he gets to this fucking hermit who's living on like the side of the river, I guess, with this parakeet, and he just collapses. He tries to kill him, collapses, and then it just skips forward and says, one year later, Halloween Eve. So you're trying to tell me that Michael Myers like collapsed in this guy's house for one year, nursed him back to health. And then on Halloween Eve, he just wakes up and just kills this guy in front of its fucking parakeet. And it's just like the stupidest thing in the history of film. Like, I swear to God, it is so freaking stupid and far-fetched. It's just like, okay, so he just had him laying on his bed for a year or so, that means? Or a goddamn year, so... I don't know. Always, always thought that was funny. Even as a kid, I was like, what the fuck, you know? Like, that right there is the big WTF, and... Then you have Daniel Harris's character of Jamie, and she's kind of now that she, now she's kind of in like the psychiatric ward, kind of. I don't know what exactly it would be like a mental hospital or a little ward, and you know she's completely mute now. She can't speak to anybody. She's just, but she's like can see almost telepathically what Michael's doing, where Michael is, and she has like seizures every time he tries to kill somebody. And that aspect of the movie I actually kind of like. Granted, it doesn't go much doesn't go anywhere really and actually halfway through the film they kind of drop it as an angle but pretty much Michael's back in Haddonfield doing his thing slashing up a bunch of people and you have people returning from the the uh, fourth one like Ellie Cornell who characters Rachel granted she gets killed off at, or very early on in this movie which really pisses me off because she was a really likable character and in essence they replace her with one of the worst fucking horror movie heroines I've ever seen in my life, if you could even call her a heroine, Wendy Kaplan as Tina. I think she was with Greg Nicotero at the time, or Savini. She was with somebody. She was dating somebody, and this is how she got the job. Holy shit. You want to talk about one of the worst fucking actresses, most annoying fucking actresses. One of those characters that you just want to smack the shit out of, the dog shit out of. Oh my god, this movie for characters sucks. There's not any good characters in this movie, exception of maybe Jamie. 
Um, even Loomis in this film, very unlikable. Like he's very, very aggressive, and he's like, "You tell me where she, where, where he is, you fucking." Like he's yelling at this little eight-year-old girl, like, like she doesn't know shit, you know? Like she knows, but I don't know. Loomis is just. I always got the sense that he was a little too aggressive in this movie, a little too over the top, and I think even Donald Pleasance admitted to that after the film came out. And basically, you, you have Wendy Kaplan, and she's like just running around being a complete fucking airhead douche, and I hate her. Oh, my God. If, if there's anybody I hate more in horror movies, I, I really have to sit down and think about it, because Wendy Kaplan is that terrible. Um, yeah, and she she's um, good friends with Rachel and this other blonde girl who I don't even remember her damn name. That's how memorable she is. And they're like going talking about this Halloween party at the, the Tower Farm, and you're like, okay, cool. So there's gonna be some kind of Halloween party. We're gonna go somewhere with this, hopefully. And Michael kills her boyfriend at one point. Really cool kill. Gets this kind of I'm not sure what it is. It just stabs him in the head, almost like a rake, but like a handle. I don't even know what it really was. Really cool kill. And also you're introduced to the man, I'm sorry, I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but the movie jumps all over the place too, this, this movie is fucking Bell's Palsy or something, and it, this man with the steel toe boots, and he's just walking around through the whole film, and you don't know what he's there for, and actually it turns out the people behind the scenes didn't even know what he was there for, they just wrote him into the story, hopefully they could figure it out by the next movie, that's what they were hoping, which is just such a clusterfuck, and... One more, one more terrible thing about this movie. You have so many scenes where Michael's just in the background, and they shoot it so you like it's like supposed to be sneaky, but it is so terrible because you have a six foot six guy with a giant butcher knife in his hand with a horrible fucking mask. Honestly, God, he looks like a bird in this movie more than fucking William Shatner, and it's just terrible. It's like. Oh my god, how many times are you going to put him behind in the shadows and stuff, you know? Like, it's just so blatantly done in your face. It's like, he's behind her, he's behind her. It's just, it, it treats the, it shows the audience no fucking respect. This movie has no respect for the audience and the people that watch it. It's, it's a complete disgrace of a movie, to be honest with you. But, you know, I, I will, I will not try to, I, I guess I pretty much bash the movie, but... Let me try to get into some positives, okay? We'll just jump to some positives. Again, I won't ruin any crazy stuff if, uh, as, as long as you don't want to hear it. Um, you have pretty good... I, I like the, the, the atmosphere of the movie. It's definitely... It feels like a Halloween movie. It feels like a lot like Part 4, Part 2, Part 1. It feels like those movies, in and of the fact that it's Michael Myers killing people in Haddonfield, and it's just, I don't know, feels really like the other movies. And that, I can give it props for. A lot of people never did give it to that. Um, Michael's very also very brutal in the movie. He uses a scythe in the movie. He uses the butcher knife. He uses that that rake thing. He uses, he hangs a guy. Like There's tons of pretty good kills in this movie that never really get mentioned. He uses a rake at one point. Fucking, he really is pretty brutal in this movie. He, is, he does get some revenge. I would say that much. Like He definitely... He kills a lot of people in a lot of different ways. They're not fantastic kills. They're not like, wow, who, who thought of this kills? But they're good enough, they're brutal enough that I can say that they they are above average, even in a slasher movie, in my opinion. There are shots of Michael who finally goes back to his house and he's chasing Jamie inside his own house. And I remember as a kid, I always thought like the house was perfectly set up. Like I thought it was like such an eerie house. It looked like the, the perfect haunted house, scary house when I was a kid. And there's these scenes where he's trying to kill her in the laundry chute. And she's like, he's just stabbing the damn thing or trying to, hoping he can get her. And she's at one point, she steps on somewhere he's stabbed to like reach to the top. And it's just such an awesome, badass scene. That's the best scene of the whole movie, that, that laundry shoot scene. The, and Danielle Harris said she was like terribly scared, you know, because they actually put markings where to step and stuff. They had a real knife, like, trying to stab, so if she even slipped or anything, she would have, you know, she could have been stabbed for all we know, which, she's a damn trooper. You gotta love Danielle Harris. She's the only real likable character in this movie. Um, she also, oh, I, I'm sorry to get off the positives again, but there's a damn stuttering kid in this movie, and I'm sorry if you stutter, if you have stuttering problems, if you know someone who stutters, I'm not trying to be politically incorrect here, but goddamn, this kid fucking sucked. He's, uh, he's at the, 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 the farm, the, 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 shut the fuck up, somebody fucking kill this kid, and at one point Michael Myers tries to fucking run him over, and I wanted him to run him over. Holy shit, you don't put a kid like that in a movie like this, I'm sorry. Every character in this movie, besides Jamie, is fucking annoying, is horrible actors, 
Oh my god, fucking, I can't stand the stuttering kid. And Wendy Kaplan, they're just together, they're just, they're a tag team of fucking hell. They're like the ding-dongs. They're fucking horrible. If you know old school horrible wrestling from the 90s, and Jim Hurd, you know the ding-dongs. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, but this movie, it, it, it ends kind of really dumb, to be honest with you. There's actually some, a character dies in this movie that... They just never, they kind of forget about in the sixth one, I guess. I, well, I'll, I'll just we'll spoil it. Loomis supposedly dies towards the end of this movie. He like, drops dead. And then in the next movie, he's alive again. So I don't know what the hell happened there. I don't know what, you know, I'm not, I guess I'm not spoiling anything because he technically doesn't die. But they wrote him off to die in this film, which makes absolutely zero sense. But this is really a shitty movie. But for some reason, I absolutely almost always go back and watch it around this time of the year you know like even more so than the first one which is weird i usually watch halloween two four and five around the halloween time and the original classic film i don't actually watch as much as the others but that's halloween five i i know i kind of trashed the movie i know it's fucking horrible in a lot of different ways but there are again like the atmosphere is good there are some there, that that laundry suit scene is fucking awesome, you know. Um, Michael's look up, he just does not look very good. There are some creepy atmospheric scenes, but I, that's all I can really give the movie. It's a real big step down from the first four movies. But if you compare it to any of the ones after it, I actually would put it over a lot of them. I'd put it over H2O, Resurrection, the remakes. I don't know if i put it over Part 6. To me, it's kind of even, if not a little worse. I don't know. I, I That's kind of a toss-up, flip a coin kind of thing. But... It's really where the Halloween series started heading downhill, but for some reason, I always go back and watch it around this time of year, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed making fun of the movie, if that is worth anything, but um, that's going to be all for now. Let's go Mets tonight, Game 5, how about that, all the way, facing the Cubs in the NLCS, I'll see you there. Jake Arrieta take, taking on the Mets, I'm, I'm super stoked, I hope the Mets win. Um, if not, it's been a really good season for the boys, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it. But that's going to be all for now. I am John Grande. I may be back with a review of The Changeling tomorrow. We'll see. I don't know. Toss up again. But uh, I am John Grande, the best in the world. You've been chilling them, guys. Peace.